Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the DAX, that's the German stock market index overlaid over the Dow 30, the US st uh, major stock market index. And I just wanted to start with this just to show you how well coordinated these are. In fact, when you get into the last financial crisis, you can see here that it almost seems like the data disappears from about in here to down there. They're so tightly correlated. Of course, when we go in, we can see that they actually are separate lines there. But you can see they're so closely correlated that you can't even see the difference between the two lines when we zoom out during this collapse phase. Now, we appear to be entering something similar to that. Uh, we know that the Federal Reserve came out and hinted at QE4. Now, that's pretty stunning to think that you have a Federal Reserve that has been consistently talking about tapering, and as soon as the financial markets even begin to teeter, they begin to talk about the next round of quantitative easing. So, the as I said many times, the Fed is in a box. I don't think they can raise interest rates. In fact, I think they're going to have to have another round of massive money printing, which is just going to make things worse. People like Jim Willie and Peter Schiff have constantly pointed out that what we actually need to do is take our medicine. And fortunately now, the medicine is going to be very painful if we take it now. But I don't think we are, uh, as I said before, I think they fully intend to run this thing off the tracks. Now, a strange anomaly occurred with the gold and silver and some of the other markets. I went to go in and do an analysis of the shoulder volume, but unfortunately the volume data has now disappeared off of NetDania. So I'm not really sure what that means. We'll just have to see if the volume data returns uh, it's very unfortunate because we were closely analyzing that. But let's get over to this article here. The reason why I made this a member update is because I don't really want to publicly come after somebody and that's the advantage of having a member site where I can more confidently share my feelings without worrying about repercussions. So here's the latest tonight from Jim Rickards and this is a pretty bold headline all the world's gold to be confiscated and buried in Switzerland by 2020 argues Jim Rickards in what pretends to be a history looking back from the future currency wars author and fund manager Jim Rickards argues that by 2020 all the gold of the G20 nations will be confiscated. Now, is China part of the G20? Uh, I don't know. But I can tell you this. I don't think they're getting any of China's gold. I don't think they're getting any of India's gold. I don't think they're getting any of Russia's gold. And I don't think they're getting any of, of Southeast Asia's gold or even Australia's gold. So... What a strange claim. And buried in a former nuclear bunker under a mountain in Switzerland to take it out of the global financial system. Oh, why did they need to do that? This is the conclusion to the astonishing Tour de Force article that kicks off his monthly newsletter, Rickard Strategic Intelligence for Agor Agora Financial, publisher of highly successful financial newsletters like Chris Mayer's Capital and Crisis, has a normally sober and thoughtful Mr. Rickards lost his marbles ad absurdum. I must confess to having my doubts on reading his first issue with one absurd conclusion leading to another and then to a totally unrealistic world gold confiscation scenario. How would that happen? The G20 meeting struggled to agree on a financial communique. How could they agree to something like that? Mr. Rickards does not stop there. In his world, not only does money die and cease to exist, but there's a sort of death of capitalism that Marx prescribed and Stalin tried to implement without notable success. There are no markets, bonds, nor money by 2024 and equality rules. Seriously? 
Strangely, the real survivors of this apocalypse to end all apocalypses are the investors who bought gold, fine art, and land, and who cashed out of gold when Mr. Rickard's newsletter told them. So apparently, you're going to have to cash out of your gold. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're going to put in. I guess uh, the SDR, that big, something that Rickards is a big promoter of. Somehow, fine art and land still has value in the future without money or markets. And illegal gold, too. How would that work? So who is this Rickards guy? And where is he coming from? Well, let's look at an official source here and there's plenty of them this is money morning now the first thing that you want to take note of here when you're thinking about a person like this supposedly in the alternative community or at least not mainstream um we'll just say uh not going with the mainstream view of things but the first thing you want to think about is how does a person get exposure on the mainstream media because we know that a lot of the people that I listen to and I consider important people like Jim Willie and others like that would never be covered in the mainstream media so how is it that these people are covered in the mainstream media and what does that mean now let's look at this here because I think pretty much most of it is admitted by Rickards himself. And this is the article uh, indicating that the intelligence community fears a 25-year Great Depression is unavoidable. Please review the transcript from today's interview to discover how you and your family can stay safe from this $100 trillion catastrophe. Steve Myers. Hi, my name is Steve Myers. I want to thank you for taking part in this exclusive Monday morning interview with Jim Rickards, the financial threat and asymmetric warfare advisor for both the Pentagon and the CIA. Really? Seriously? He is the financial threat and asymmetric warfare advisor for both the Pentagon and the CIA? That should be sending up dozens of red flags. Recently, all 16 branches of our intelligence community have come together to release a shocking report. These agencies that include the CIA, the FBI, the Army, the Navy, they've already begun to estimate the impact of the fall of the dollar as the global reserve currency. Well, maybe if we didn't spend so much money on the CIA, the FBI, and the Army, and the Navy we wouldn't have to worry about a collapse of our currency. Did they ever think of that? No, probably not. And our reign as the world's leading superpower being annihilated as a way equivalent to the end of the British Empire post-World War II. And the end game could be a nightmarish scenario where the world falls into an extended period of global anarchy. Jim Rickards fears he and his colleagues' warnings are being ignored by our political leaders and the Federal Reserve, and we're on the verge of entering the darkest economic period in our nation's history, one that will ignite a 25-year Great Depression. Now, there are some serious doom porn. Today, we're going to examine everything he's uncovered because the bedlam could begin with the next within the next six months. By the way, this doesn't have a date, so you don't know when the next six months is. I guess I could do some research. It'd be nice if there was a date. Today we're going to examine everything he's uncovered because the bedlam could begin within the next six months, which is why every American should hear his warnings before it's too late. Jim Rickards, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure, Steve. Glad to be with you. In the early 80s, you were a member of the team that helped negotiate the end to the Iran hostage crisis. Really? You mean October surprise? Interesting. In the late 90s, when it was discovered that the Wall Street firm long-term capital management was about to cause a total collapse of the financial system, financial markets, the Federal Reserve had to turn to you in order to stop this catastrophe from plunging America into recession. Wow, is that strike three for this guy? No, here's strike three. And then 911, you were tasked by the CIA with investigating the potential insider trading that took place prior to the terrorist attacks. Hmm. 
Rickards. That's exactly right. The problem was the CIA didn't have any capital markets expertise. <laughs> now that's a good one. That is hilarious. And why should they? Prior to the beginning of globalization, capital markets weren't really part of the battle space. So the CIA engaged in some outreach. They recruited certain people, myself included, to bring Wall Street expertise to the agency. This led to Project Prophecy. So what the CIA said is, well, if there's going to be another spectacular attack using price signals to determine the actions of partic participants in the market, whether it be terrorists or strategic rivals of the United States, could you spot it? Could you get the information and actually break up the plot and save American lives? So this is what Rickards has been tasked with, and it goes on and on. I, this is a big, gigantic infomercial for Rickards and his newsletter, and uh, just more of the same. So, but let's let's dig deeper into this. Let's take a look at his book. Now he's got a new book, "The Death of Money: The Coming Collapse of the International Monetary System," and just a little trick you can use if you're on Amazon. Usually if you want to get the true scoop on somebody, it's just like if you're thinking about watching a movie, you can go to IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. Go down there and click on the one stars and see what people have to say. So that's what we're going to do here with Jim Rickard's book. And it's going to be fairly enlightening here. So let's get to... I believe it is the third one here. Now, the, okay. After this review was written, William K., managing partner of the Greater Asian Hedge Fund, discussed U.S. disinformatia in gold. See, trip down the rabbit hole of lies and disinformation agents at King World News. Continuing with the original review. Rickards is an investment banker, an insider, and apparently a shill who brags about his relationship with the CIA. As John Ehrlichman might have said, this book reads like it's a modified, limited hangout. To take an example, Rickards repeatedly and gratuitously insults 911 truthers, quite irrelevant to his topic. The current dire situation is minimized in vital ways, the massive fraud in economic statistics is not discussed. BLS methodologies, for example, have been manipulated to minimize unemployment and inflation. Minimizing inflation in turn exaggerates GDP and understates the critical debt-to-GDP ratio. This book published in April ignores the import of gigantic events like J.P. Morgan selling their New York City headquarters to China for a knockdown price. Listen to Dr. Jim Willey and you will learn that they defaulted on a huge gold contract. Also ignored is the systematic suiciding of mid-level bankers. Listen to V, the guerrilla economist, who predicted the suicides a month before they began, and you learn that there is a hit team at work. Apparently, the banks have also taken out peasant insurance to cash in on their cleanup of those who know too much about the fraud. Rickard's finesse is one of the most important economic stories of the new century, Germany's demand for repatriation of their gold. He doesn't discuss the New York Fed's outright refusal to return 80% of the 1,500 tons of German gold supposedly on deposit, their incredible seven-year repatriation schedule, and their complete failure to meet even that. Only five tons returned in the first year, and the Germans had to give up because the gold is all gone. Act now while supplies last. But now I want to show you an even more important one because we have this boast from Rickards that he was brought on. Uh, he doesn't really say he was brought on to investigate the trading that occurred during 911, but he certainly doesn't tell us much about it. He just tells us that he was brought on to keep something like that from happening in the future. But let's look at this review here where they dig into what actually happened. So says Jim Rickards, oh, I'm sorry, did Al-Qaeda cash in on the 911 attacks? 
So says Jim Rickards, author of the hot bestseller, The Death of Money, The Coming Collapse of the International Monetary System, which presents a persuasive argument that citizens of planet Earth face an imminent global financial meltdown, one that will make 2008 look like a warm-up. Rickards' book includes insightful chapters about Germany and the Eurozone, the BRICS, China, the IMF, as well as clear analysis about how the Federal Reserve has painted itself into a fiscal corner from which there is no exit and now faces insolvency. Unfortunately, to get to all this valuable material, the reader must first wade through hip-deep hogwash in Chapter 1, in which the author reviews the evidence for insider trading days before the 911 attacks. In Chapter 1, Rickard's otherwise clear vision fails him. The author is absolutely correct that pre-911 insider trading did occur. Rickard's also correctly notes that every transaction has two parties, meaning that every put and call option leaves a paper trail, but Rickards insults our intelligence when he tells us that associates of Osama bin Laden were responsible for the insider trading. Rickards would have us believe, for example, that the terrorists were behind the 600% spike in call options for the military contractor Raytheon, whose stock surged 37% in the weeks after 911. Other big winners were L3 Communications, Northrop Grumman, and Allied Tech Systems. According to Paul Zembeka, professor of econometrics at SUNY Buffalo, the put call options were exercised, meaning that whoever purchased them later collected the profits, blood money. But it is believable that the very same terrorists who sought to destroy America got away with profiting from the subsequent vast expansion of the U.S. war machine. Catching those responsible certainly was the intent of the Securities and Exchange Commission, which led the probe into allegations of insider trading in the weeks after 9-1-1. At the same time, SEC Chairman Harvey Pitt told the press, quote, we will do everything in our power to track those guilty people down and bring them to justice, end quote. Everyone took it for granted that the paper trail would lead to Al-Qaeda. Yet weeks later, the SEC quietly and inexplicably tabled its investigation. Why? Instead of issuing indictments, the SEC took the unprecedented step of deputizing everyone associated with its probe. This totaled hundreds, possibly thousands of people. Why did the SEC do this? The answer was transparently obvious to former LAPD narcotics investigator Mike Rupert, who pointed out that the SEC deputized its own investigators to effectively gag them, no doubt to prevent leakage of its actual findings. And what were those findings? Well, probably the inconvenient truth that the paper trail led not to bin Laden, but back to Wall Street. As we know, there was leakage despite the SEC's best efforts to keep a lid on things. The Independent, the UK paper, reported to the embarrassment of investigators, it has emerged that the firm used to buy the put options of United Airlines was headed until 1998 by Alvin Buzzy Krongard, now executive director of the CIA. George Tennant had personally recruited Krongard, probable, probably to serve as his liaison with Wall Street. The firm in question was America's oldest bank, A.B. Brown, which merged with Bankers Trust in 1997. In 1999, when Bankers Trust, Alex Brown pled guilty to criminal conspiracy charges after it was revealed that top-level executives had created a $20 million slush fund of unclaimed funds. BT, Alex Brown, was on the verge of being closed down when Deutsche Bank scooped it up. Krongard's former associate at Alex Brown, Mayo Shattuck III, who helped engineer the merger with Bankers Trust, went on to assume Krongard's former duties as private banker to the firm's wealthiest clients, personally arranging confidential transactions and transfers. According to the New York Times, in January 2001, Shattuck was named co-head of investment banking, overseeing Deutsche Bank's 400 brokers who cater to wealthy clients. Shattuck's own sudden resignation on September 12, 2001, must therefore be viewed as highly suspicious. Shattuck retired without a word of explanation, even though he reportedly had three years remaining on his contract. 
All of the above is conspicuously absent from Rickard's discussion about insider trading. Now think about this. This is the guy the CIA brought in to investigate this and look to see if it happens in the future. But we don't hear about any of these findings from Jim Rickards. I wonder why. One may draw his, her own conclusions. I've drawn mine. Even as we teeter on the brink of a financial meltdown of historic proportions, the insider writer who would explain all of this cannot bring himself to acknowledge the true extent of Wall Street corruption and criminality, especially regarding 911, the fulcrum event that produced the world as we know it. Excellent, excellent. So there you go. There's Jim Rickards exposed. So how much of this should we take seriously? that Rickards thinks that all of the world's gold is going to be in Switzerland. I think there's about a 1% chance of Jim Rickards being right. My guess is that Jim Rickards is a mouthpiece for the intelligence agencies, the military establishment, and they are the mouthpieces for the Western banksters, and the Western banksters are going down. I believe that the Arab nations have had it, Russia has had it, China has had it, and Southeast Asia and many other nations and probably a lot of Africans as well have had it with these Illuminati psychopathic Western banksters. And this is just more inf misinformation, disinformation for Mr. Rickards trying to get us to believe that there's going to be some power in the IMF or in Switzerland, which they've roped into their Euro. And I believe that all these Western, Western powers are going down. And this is just more disinformation from them on their way to the bottom. And we'll talk to you next time.